Hey, what's up, dudes? So, today we're gonna check out Colat. Colat? Colat? I can never pronounce the name of these games right, and I hope you'll forgive me for that. <laughs> uh, but, uh, this is, this is a short game. Uh, that's pretty much all I know about it. Um, uh, and, well, except for the fact that it's supposed to be spooky. Uh, so let's hop right in. 56 years ago, Russia, the northern Ural Mountains, a group of nine students of the Ural Polytechnic Institute embarked upon a difficult winter expedition to reach the Otorten Mountain. Their journey seemed to progress according to plan. However, on the seventh day of their trip, the weather conditions worsened. They lost their orientation and were forced to set up a camp on the slope of the mountain called Kolat Siakl. It was their last stop. Three weeks later in Yekaterinburg, when their families received no word of their success, the first rescue expeditions were sent. On February 25th, 1959, an abandoned encampment was found. The tent was torn down and covered with snow, with all the group's belongings left inside. Further examination revealed it was cut from inside out. The surrounding footprints indicated the crew had fled the tent. They were barefooted. This suggests a frantic escape, characteristic of people scared out of their wits. Two sets of prints led to a forested area down the slope. The rescue team found an improvised fireplace and two bodies. They were lying in but their underwear, with cuts and scratches to their limbs, suggesting they had tried to climb the tree in panic. What could terrify them so much? The next three bodies were found scattered a few hundred meters from the first discovery. One of them had suffered a fractured skull, this despite no evidence of a struggle. It took the spring thaw, two months later, to enable the rescue team to find the rest of the victims. The last four skiers were found buried in a thick layer of ice and snow. Their autopsies led to even more bizarre findings. All of the bodies had severe internal injuries caused by an undetermined force, similar to that of a serious car accident. No external damage nor bruises were visible, besides a tongue ripped from one victim's mouth and a strange orange skin color. Much speculation arose from these puzzling events. Such theories included attack from the local tribesmen from an avalanche or animals. Each theory, however, only served to create more questions. The truth behind this tragic course of events remains unexplained to this day. What really happened? Maybe the answer still waits to be discovered deep under the snow. Oh my god. So... I mean, I, sh I should have researched at least a little bit. Um, see what this game is all about. But what I'm guessing is that uh, I'm going to investigate what happened to these students. Um, now, don't quote me on this, but I think the story is... This is a true story? Maybe? I, I, I feel like I read that somewhere. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I gotta, I'm sorry, I gotta turn down this audio. It is very loud. Music volume, holy crap, man. Chill out. Alright. I don't feel like it's any better, but oh well. Uh, so I don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing. Am I just... 
I have to just walk around? What? I mean, it's, it's, like, I've creeped out a little bit already. I mean, the, uh, the environment, the ambiance is, um, really well done. Um, and you know, I'm not usually into the music, uh, but, I mean, it's kind of unsettling, and I like it. It's, it's pretty neat. Uh, <laughs> where the hell am I going? I'm just gonna keep going this way, I guess. I mean, it looks like I'm getting somewhere. Now, I'm wondering what kind of... Like, because I know it's just... Oh, the mood just changed. Oh, the music changed. That's not good. Um, but yeah, I know this game's supposed to be spooky. But I don't know, like, what kind of spooks it is. If it's, um, supposed to be jump scares or, or, or what, and, like, what kind of mechanics, uh, it has. I'm supposed to run. Oh, that is creepy as all hell. Yeah, I'm not good down this creepy path. Oh man, You're coming to me. I don't know. You tell me, homie. Uh, am I? Am I coming to you? Oh god, this is really unsettling. Oh, uh, and it's a cave. Oh jeez. Oh jeez, get ready guys. Hmm. Oh god. Oh shit. Oh that got me. That got me good. <laughs> In the end, the only thing I saw was a flash. An insufferable burning light. The pain ripping apart my body. What? I felt it tearing out of my soul. After a while, I was nobody. Nothing. The light went out and I vanished into overwhelming darkness. I welcomed the end with delight. Whoa. Man, I cannot see anything right now. I mean, I know I can, like just barely make out that there's snow on the ground. Oh shit, I see a light. Oh, there's something there. What is this? Hello? Anybody there? Oh, it's a tent. I am oh, Lord. right behind you. What? What is going on? Keep your eyes and ears open. Danger may appear everywhere. Oh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, so I got I got scared once. I feel like I've kind of warmed up to it now. So, I know it wasn't like a monster or anything. Hold on to your humanity. When others convince you of being no more than a subject, an object, which they can bend to their will. When they told you that you were a monster that deserved punishment. When you could really not remember your sins. When they took away your loved ones, leaving you to rot in the dark. The problem is... It's in their darkness. You have never been alone. Oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, I got a flashlight now. That's cool. Ah, oh, I love me some flashlights, man. 
Somebody left their left their goggles here. Alright, so I just what is that light up there? Uh, so I just know I have to go this way. That's all I know right now. Just because I saw footprints. Am I going to make my way up to that red light? Is that like a beacon? So it said keep your eyes and ears open because danger lurks everywhere. Oh god, what is this? It's a meteor? What happened here? Oh, good lord. That's crazy. I set out the moment I heard about the incident. I was in the area, so I reported to the unit myself to be automatically assigned to the case. I arrived at Vishai on February the 19th, a couple of days before the Institute's rescue group. While waiting for them, I started asking around to see if anyone from among the locals knew anything about the incident. One of them said he had a hunting cabin in the search region and knew the area very well. I decided to use him as a guide. When the rescue team had finally arrived, I explained to them what the unit's role was in this mission and that all discoveries or observations should be brought to my attention before anyone else's. We established priorities, checked the equipment and set off right away. It was not until February the 26th we found the tent that I believe belonged to the students. Initial findings show that the people in the tent cut its side wall and for some reason tried to escape from it in panic. The tracks in the snow led to a forest a kilometre and a half away. But the trail went cold after 500 metres and we had to carefully search the entire area. This was not a place of any average incident. We had shivers crawling all over our bodies because of the atmosphere surrounding us. I was convinced that something more than just an accident had occurred here. I had the feeling we were dealing with something unnatural. Damn. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh no. Oh no. That's not good. Something weird going on. Alright. Oh shit. What the hell? Hey, come back. How do I run? I can't run. Come back, man. We're going. Hey. Oh, good lord. Okay, well, we picked one person and we're just gonna go this direction, I guess. That was weird. Uh, so I mean, in my mind, I just think it was a bear. Killed it, everybody. <laughs> Nothing unnatural here. I know there's a bunch of floating rocks and shit, but just don't mind that. That's just, that happens sometimes. Oh, or it was Sasquatch. Oh shit, did they find the Squatch? Oh man, that'd be insane. Is that what this game's all about? Is this is a Sasquatch game. Hmm. Oh lord, which way am I going? And there's an obvious path up there, but this path is kind of... I don't know. I just want to go this way. Because you know something might... Uh, maybe, maybe we can't go this way. Yeah, okay. Never mind. We gotta take the path. Might be. Might be. 
Do we have to deal with like wolves and shit too? I don't know how much work they put into this game. If it's just a uh, walking simulator and I'll just get a bunch of jump scares or if I actually have to like avoid shit. Oh jeez. I hear something. This is another page. Ah, oh, sweet. Do I have to read it? Okay. Mysterious lights above the Svobodny Cosmodrome. Uh, mysterious events in the sky were noted during the night of 4th to 5th July. Witnesses testified they had seen a bright orange sphere, which had crossed the sky above the city several times, moving chaotically and immediately changing its direction of flight. Finally, it stopped and disappeared. Major Girka, an aviation... Uh, professional confirms it is possible for any flying object we know to it is impossible for any flying object to, we know to move like that uh, the military and cosmodrome's personnel answered our questions in a short and firm way by distancing themselves to the event informing there is no activity in that area as well as there were no tests performed yeah. I guess we're gonna, I guess I'm just gonna go this way. I like that they don't make it, uh, like, the path apparent to you. I'm kinda digging that. They're just like, they give, give you a bunch of ways to go and they're like, you know, have a ball. And I am. I'm having a good time. This is, uh, it's pretty neat so far. And it's sufficiently creepy. I think like the sound of the trees and the wind, that's, I've always found that chilling in a way, and that howling. The howling is starting to get to me. It's making me think like. What is that? Oh shit. Something's, something's gonna happen. Oh lord god almighty. Fuck. What is that? Oh god. It's making me tense up like real bad. <laughs> I don't know. Oh man. Oh, that's really spooky. Fuck. I saw something up there. Maybe not. Okay. Let's just keep going. Let's just keep on keeping on. As one does. In this type of situation. Uh, just heading all out. I am curious as to like what my character's backstory is. Like, well, why am I here? Why would I put myself through this? Unless I was like a parent of one of the kids that that died or something and I just needed to find closure. So I just come out here pretty much like a suicide mission just to find out exactly what happened for myself. I don't know, maybe I I'm just making up stories right now. <laughs> I don't know the real reason. 
What is that up there? I'm getting closer to it. I just need to find out what it is now. Do spires like this exist? What the fuck? How in the hell did I make it back here? What is that up there? I think I might go explore that. Damn, that sent me in a big loop. Huh. Is that what all these paths are? Just send me in a big loop and then I have to pick a another direction to go? Oh man. It's just gonna make me uncomfortable until I get back to the, the meteor, the place where the meteor hit. I mean, I guess that's what that was. Um, I'm not even gonna pretend to know what that was exactly. It's just a big hole in the ground. That's all I know. Just a big old hole. Man, I am. I'm gonna find out what that is up there. I guess I have to go this way. Oh look, there's another. There's another page. Cool. Alright, let's go read this right quick. See if there's any. Any more good info? Uh, a guard's confessions. 72 year old Anne N, after years of silence, decided to talk about events from her past. She told us, I am terminally ill and have nothing to lose. I want people to know what harm had been done and uh, all this in the name of science. Anna N described the place. A science research center where scientists allegedly conducted inhumane experiments on prisoners. There was a special chamber. Uh, they had never allowed us even to get close. It was guarded by the soldiers, although I did see people that were taken there. Not many came back. I kept in touch with one of them. I asked what they had been doing there and why so few came back out, out of there alive. He looked at me terrified. He said, Anna. Have you ever seen nothingness? A deep emptiness with no end? I was there. I stood above the collapsed valley of the universe, on the border between reality and unreality. There's an abyss there, a gigantic well with no bottom, a dark cave of hell, and I felt it. It was drilling in my head like like ticking clock. It looked at me from below. It was sneaking up on me. And slowly started entering me, the darkness. Uh, Some time later, the same prisoner gave me a letter to pass on, in which he had begged for help. I was supposed to give it to the press and expose the whole thing, but the letter disappeared. Up until now, I don't know what happened to it. Anyway, they would probably cover up the whole thing. And we asked the supervisors of the prison unit to which Anna Ann was subject to for a comment. What? Waldemir? Doesn't look like Vladimir, maybe it's misprint, I don't know. Kronsky, the unit's commander, strongly denied such events took place. He also informed us in a short message that Anna Ann was a guard but never worked on in the mentioned above center because an object like that simply does not exist. He sent Anna Ann's employee record as proof that in the years 1940-1950 she worked in Sechenoka Prison, also known as Special Object Number 110. She had been let go from this facility due to mental illness. A copy of her health record and medical certificate were attached. Huh. Is that what I'm heading towards right now? Oh man, I wanted to go up there. Why can't I? I'm 
think there's any way for me to get up there. Cool. Alright, guess I gotta go this direction. So there were nine people, right? Pretty sure there was nine nine kids on this expedition. So the meteor's over there. We're gonna go this way though. Let's see what's up. See what's see what's what the haps is. Oh, there's a bridge. I kinda wanna go across the bridge. It looks cooler. Hmm. Oh, I hear another page. Over here. Where is it? Is it up top? What the hell? I hear a page somewhere. Maybe I'll wrap up around and find it. Probably. I can still hear it. Oh, there it is. Sweet. We are sitting Found in room it. number 23. Although sitting might not be the right word because we are running around trying to finish up packing anything else we could need. Uh, food cans, tools, essentially whatever we get our hands on. We want to be sure that we took everything we could possibly need. We're running out of time. Damn it, where did I put my belt? I'm sure we forgot about something. We're almost ready. We lost the knife. We're counting the money. We're leaving the room in a complete mess. So, we made it to the train station. We're singing all the songs we know and making up new ones as well. Everyone is so excited. Finally, at around 3 a.m., we go to bed. I wonder, what is awaiting us when we get there? What will we see? How far will we make it? I hear the rest of the group breathing peacefully, and it's snowing outside. Well, isn't that nice? Oh man, this is a... This bridge is no good. <laughs> oh man. What am, I, what am I heading towards here? What is up here? Is this a little camp? I hear a little music sting. How am I supposed to get that? Oh, I have a map. What the hell? Oh, and I can run? What else? What other superpowers do I have? I don't have the power to jump, apparently. How am I supposed to get that? Do I have to walk? How do I go over there? You know what? Should I just run? Oh, sweet, I made it. Nice. Uh, Seversk is a closed city in Tomsk Oblast, Russia. Uh, located 15 kilometers, 9.3 miles northwest of Tomsk, on the right bank of the Tom River, and is in the hands of Rosatom, the Federal Atomic Energy Agency, founded in 1949. It was known as Bayati Pochtovi. Uh, town status was granted to it in 1956. It comprises several nuclear reactors and chemical plants for separation, enrichment, and reprocessing of uranium and plutonium. The headquarters of 
of the Russian Research Unit for Natural Phenomena until 1991 called Soviet Research Unit. Uh, the unit's activities concerned research on occurring natural disasters in Russia. Okay. All right. Okay. See, how do I get down now? Cool. Oh, man. 